right, guys, so here's video at number three in our three-part series of our visit to Reptech and Cobleta Cafe. We're about to go one-on-one -on -one with Stephen Cush, the scrub king, to check out his awesome scrub room. Let's go inside. Six feet wide, two feet deep, and two and a half feet tall. And uh, from what I've kept scrubs in over the time, uh, this is to me, for an average size adult, about the perfect enclosure, um, where we can still have them triple stacked in here to be space efficient. We give these animals plenty of space to move around. So we have a far neck pair in here. We can see one of our, uh, our Malukins right here. Yes. This is a- uh, What a dreamy animal. First one I ever acquired back in 2016, I believe, as a baby, and uh, he's now an adult male, about eight feet long, uh, in with a female. This so, is definitely a cool. Animal. This is one of the most special animals in here to me. This is my first scrub python. No way! Oh, that's uh, awesome, this, is dude. Like, this is the one, a little red neonate, and now uh, is a breeder male. So he has been with a female. And they have locked up six times this year. This is his first year breeding, and he went right to it. Uh, he has that kind of manaquari muted banded look to him like yeah uh, really kind of like washed out tan color for me early on in scrub pythons this was the look that I love the most and uh, still holds a very special place in my heart so does this animal obviously an extremely good temperament on this snake um, I would I would put this thing on Lars's head if Lars was standing right here so yeah very very special animal and uh, one that I hope is around for a very very long time it's gotta be awesome seeing your first snake actually like breeding this? now too. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh -huh. This is yeah, how we hold the snake. Hand. Yeah, the right, the, the, the left hand with the right hand picture. Yeah, you, know, you gotta do it like that. Yeah, this is a uh, this snake is almost as old as I am. Wow. So this is a uh, thirteen. <laughs> it's fourteen actually. It's, no, wow. so this this animal was produced by he's, he's in shut unfortunately, but this was produced by VPI in two thousand one. Wow. 2001. About 20 years old. I was still in high school. Is one year Holy older shit. Than it's the same age as Steven. I'm, I'm, I am one year older than this snake, depending on when it was actually born. But, um, that is so epic. Yeah, about 10, 11 foot long and very calm demeanor on this animal. But uh, to me, really, it's, it's an honor to, to have in the first place, have an animal that was produced by the Barkers and so long ago, too. And it's, it's doing very well um, for being such an old animal has some kind of some quirks that go along with being a bit on the older side, but uh, overall a very healthy snake and one that is really an honor to have in the collection. That's so, so sweet. VPI Barnick from 2001. The snake was born when I was still in high school, oh my God. The snake was born when I was one. All right, so this is, uh, I don't think I need to explain why this animal is so special, but this is probably one of the most golden Barnecks I've ever seen. So about an eight foot sub-adult female. Uh, she is an import, so not a captive bred, but still this incredible color to her. And um, very active. Yeah, you know, not the not the worst temperament, not one that I necessarily trust like some of the others, which haven't had her for all that long. Just some, something you gotta keep respecting. And stay, yeah, stay on exactly. Sure. Some of these animals it takes a little bit of time before the full comfort level is realized. So this, this is a very special pair. They speak for themselves. This is our big pair of Malukan scrub pythons. Well, our, our big female with a very large male, not our largest male, but uh, she's just shy of 12 feet. He's about 10 foot, and she is obviously very, very dark. Um, we have seen copulation from this pair. So, you know, fingers are crossed that we can get something out of either two of our females this year.
But um, this snake, uh, from what I can tell, is within a couple weeks of her ovulation. Wow. Um, she Huge. has the biggest follicles I've ever felt in a snake. We've had confirmed copulation with her. Um, everything's moving in the right direction, so I'm pretty confident we're going to get a uh, clutch from her this year. Um, one thing that all scrubs will do when they're developing is uh, they'll darken up. She shed two days ago and is as dark She's as I've ever seen her. Dark as well. Wow. It's the one that had the big old head, right? Yeah, this one's actually pretty damn big. So uh, the, the F2 female that's in with her uh, was produced by VPI and is the daughter of the snake that was called Rain, uh, which is probably one of the nicest looking barnecks that's ever lived. Um, he had very distinctive banding, very bright uh, tan base color with a light colored tail. Um, and, you know, we're very fortunate to be working with this VPI lineage that otherwise is essentially gone um, from captivity. We have um, these two adults here and two babies in the back. So, or I guess two to three year olds, so young ones. Room number two. Side of the scrub python building. Uh, we have some more adults in here, but then we have a lot of our younger uh, raise up animals in here as well. So, this right here is an Aru type scrub python. Yeah, he's the nicest Aru I've seen. Definitely has a hypo like appearance to him. He, he's been with the, our female Aru this year and um, may have seen some activity out of them, so could be expecting a clutch from the Arus. But uh, yeah, just Incredible coloration. To me, Aru scrub pythons look like an orange diamond python. That's kind of how I describe it with that kind of speckled pattern throughout, just the overall orange wash. Um, definitely underrated, kind of Malukan like as well in their uh, way their color transitions into their tail. But I think uh, one that most people that know, you know, kind of casually about scrub pythons aren't even aware of in the first place. But to me, one of the most beautiful animals in the entire scrub colony. All right, this animal here is very special. This is a biak type scrub python. Love me a biak. This is a, an adult female, and uh, you know they're just they're incredibly unique. So at, at the current moment, these are classified in the same species as the barnecks and the southerns. To me, these are, are completely a unique animal on their own. Uh, they most closely remind me of Halmaheras with their uh, Ooh, the with their demeanor. Wow, that oh, is like awesome. Silvery marbly eyes. Yeah. That is so neat. And uh, this girl has a very calm disposition for sure. Okay. My hope is by next year we'll be able to uh, attempt with a small male. Um, but, you know, she's uh, she's not going anywhere. So she's she's about seven years old, I believe. So definitely, definitely the right age. Um, Biox in general don't seem to get quite as big as some of the other scrubs. Say, she's, for being seven, she's pretty small. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're still, you know, they're very slender. This is the Biox scrub, the kind of two-toned, silvery, brown look. Two very tone. unique pattern. Beautiful. I love it. The colors are so crazy. It just goes oh from like that black. Lord. So this, uh, yeah. this animal speaks for itself. This is the smallest of our... Malukan scrub pythons, Clastolepis. And this animal actually has a pretty funny story behind it. Um, we were at a, a, an Arlington show, and at one of the tables there was a handful of scrub pythons that before the show weren't even labeled yet. And this animal hadn't even had its first shed. It was tiny, it was kind of this like drab, gray, kind of brown color. But I, I came up to it and I noticed the pattern change and, and the, the head structure and I immediately realized that this was a Malukan, it was just a very, very tiny baby. Um, and uh, needless to say, got this animal for quite the steal as the seller didn't even know what it was and um, was told a couple of times that it actually wasn't a Malukan. But so they're not the, born this color. No, no, Brown. they're definitely not. Yeah, they come, come out either uh, red or kind of silvery um, and kind of develop the gold within their first number of sheds. And, uh, you know, by about, but for a little while, I actually kind of was convinced that it wasn't a Malukan based on a couple of things. And, but then it shed one time and I'm like, man, that is gold. This is absolutely a Malukan. Mm -hmm. So, and now obviously there's no, no debating it.
Whoa. Oh, yes. This right here be a helmet hair, is, is a helmet hair scrub. And uh, yes. this is one of the males. Uh, we have raised this animal from a hatchling, so it was imported as a hatchling. And uh, we've been raising it up for a few years now. It is doing extremely well. It's really just a flawless animal. Very nice coloration, kind of a silvery top with some yellow coming in on the sides. But and obviously those, those red the eyes. The belly is crazy itself. too. Mm -hmm. Like, look at that thing. Yeah, these are gorgeous, gorgeous snakes. So this this right here, to me, is one of the nicest bar necks I've seen in my entire life. 100%. So black. So nice. This is a, a second generation captive bred. Bold black it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is a, uh, a grandchild of that snake rain I was describing earlier. So this is a VPI lineage animal. And... Uh, this is basically exactly what Rain looked like, except he had a, a light tan tail. So this is basically Rain with a dark tail, but that very wide, very bold banding going down the middle is uh, what's so special about this snake. And as you know, you guys have all seen, we've had a number of animals out. These do not have bad temperaments by any means. No, they're super no, chill. Cannibal. They're all very chill and they all are very good feeders as well. With the babies, we just immediately grabbed them from the tops every time we cleaned and they're yeah, all just it. chill. Yeah, so a lot of these babies that came in too, same, same method. They're just used to that environment now. Mm -hmm. They don't know any different. Yes. This here is another favorite. So orangey. Um, this snake is uh, unique for a few reasons. One, for this orange coloration. The one that this is a uh, locality cross scrub python. So this is a Maruki to a Highland. Um, there have not been very many cross breedings done so far in captivity with scrub pythons, either uh, full species hybrid or um, locality crosses. And uh, this animal quite obviously came out phenomenally. So this, this animal is very special. And I think, uh, you know, I think there's room within the scrub python game to have kind of like a designer cross market, so to speak. Kind of like the chondros? Yeah, exactly. Or con chondros are, are like reticulated pythons where they're where still- more like, for visual pairing versus just locality or whatever? That, or you can have both. You can have locality specific or you can go with designer. I think I think it'll be very parallel to green tree pythons in the long run, um, where there's a demand on, on both sides of the equation. But I think also that comes down to very specific and uh, kind of detailed documentation along the way of knowing exactly what goes into these uh, these animals. Um, this one is uh, definitely a very exciting one for me. So this um, bar neck was produced by David Means. We have uh, actually both of the parents up in the other room, but uh, has a very, very much an azanthic look to it. Um, the mom is an extremely dark individual that uh, and she's produced some uh, ridiculous looking offspring, this being one of them. So kind of going forward, this is one of the animals I'm most excited about attempting to breed to get F2 babies out of, but to also see if there's anything genetic going on with this kind of uh, azanthic, anery looking phenotype. That's so sick. Yeah. Uh, this to me is what I would describe almost as a hypomelanistic wow. bar neck. You can see through the, bo uh, the body, almost no black pigment at all uh, behind the head. As opposed to the other one. Yeah, exactly. But you can still see the very clear banding on it. It's just, just a much a lighter brown. Lighter, right. Yeah. And uh, with barnecks, generally speaking, there are animals that have lighter tan tails or then darker black tails. To me, this is actually still a black tail. It is just lightened up by whatever this is. Um, so this potential hypo trait I think has just greatly in, uh, increased the coloration on this snake's entire body. Um, another one that keeps getting better with age for one, and two, I just can't wait to eventually uh, attempt breeding and potentially see offspring from. So, uh, these were from the 2020 clutch. We had 11 babies, and um, these are four of them right here. So it's crazy to see how variable they all are, like how dark here this one is. Dark and contrasted, dark and kind of muted, brighter with that very high contrast bars, and then here one that almost has no bars at all until later on in the body. And it's dark. And yeah, so I think this this to me 
show just how variable the barn eggs are and how random this can be, how these animals are all siblings from, an, uh, from parents that did not look all that different. So we saw the, the adult male earlier, here's that brighter Manaquari type looking animal. Um, the female who we didn't show, she's a bit darker than him, but a, a similar pattern. So two, uh, two animals that had a pattern kind of akin to this one, produced a couple snakes that had very, very defined banding. Um, so these animals to me show just the potential for the future with the scrub python project. Um, in particular with bar barn X, how much line breeding potential there is, kind of like designer line bred barn X, so to speak. And as you can see with all four of these, they have really just perfect demeanors. Um, you can chill. touch them on their face, they don't really care, very curious snakes. Uh, they probably crawl onto your head and sit there for hours if you let them. So to me, these are just about the perfect snake in total. Obviously I'm biased, but uh, I'd like to let somebody argue against that point. That's why you're the scrub king. All right guys, that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed that amazing scrub python collection. Shout out to Steven and Dez for showing it off. If you don't love scrubs after that, I don't know what you're doing. So they're awesome. There's so much different stuff you can do with them with Stephen talked about the localities and making them kind of like chondros. Awesome stuff. Make sure you go follow their pages. Check them out. Until the next time, take it easy.